am Tony Anderson, and what we have here is Connected Real Estate. So, this is all based around the Richard Zeta acquisition. We just acquired Richard Zeta, okay? And what they do is, or what we're demonstrating here, is Connected Real Estate, so building control. Over on the left side of the, of the box, we have the building control protocols. So, all of the major protocols, like, uh, like Modbus and, uh, and BACnet, LawnNet, and you know, all of the standard protocols are supported. So that's on the left side of the building protocols, on the right side is IP. In the middle is the mediator box. The mediator is a Linux-based PC or a Linux-based processor, okay? And it does all of the control functions. So the easiest way to show it is probably to give you a typical example. So normally, if I'm going to control my heating and air conditioning, I use the thermostat. If I come down to the thermostat, right now it's cooling, so I'm going to, I'm going to change it to heating. And I'm going to bump the temperature up so that we can kick the heating on. In my normal environment, that's the only way I have to control my heating and air conditioning. In an IP-enabled environment, I not only have the thermostat, but you'll see the uh, heating is just coming on. The icon on the portal came up to show you that the heating is on. Okay? And life is good. So, since I'm IP-enabled, I not only have the ability of controlling my heating and air conditioning from the thermostat, but I can now do it from my PC. This is just a PC running a browser that's browsing into the mediator box. If you have multiple buildings and you're, you're running them all from the same uh, mediator uh, box, okay, I can control them all from different buildings. I can have multiple PCs logged into the box at the same time. Okay. Now what we're going to do, not only can I control it from my PC, but I can also control it from my phone. If I have a Cisco IP phone, what I can do is I can hit my services button. Oops, hit my services button once. Scroll down to the HVAC. And now I have my heating and cooling. Since I'm heating, I'm going to turn on the cooling. So I select my cooling. Zero that out. Tell it I want it to be 60. And submit. Now what's going to happen, okay, my heating went off and my air conditioning came on. Also, my fan came on in my HVAC system. It's down here. Okay, so that's, that's temperature control. Let's say that I have a power utility company that gives me a credit when I cut my power consumption during peak periods. What they'll do is they'll send me a signal indicating that this is a peak period. Obviously, I'm not connected into the grid, so I have to simulate that. My lighting will cut back to half. We send out a message so everybody understands what's going on. We cut off our air conditioning, so whatever profile we set up for our heating and air conditioning comes into play. Now let's imagine that I have a um, that I have an airflow sensor in my HVAC system. So now all of a sudden my HVAC gets clogged up. I'm going to simulate that by pressing this button. An alarm goes off indicating that something bad has happened. A message goes out on my service radio so my service man knows that he needs to come fix the uh, heating and air conditioning in the lobby. Now those are just a couple of examples of the kinds of things you can do with this application. Anything that's on one of the standard buses, one of the standard building control systems, we can control it, we can set policy for it, we can, we can adapt to, uh, to changes.